Hello and welcome back to the State of the Strong, brought to you by Bull Brands. I'm here with Lirai. How are you doing, Lirai? I'm doing so good. I just had a sip of water. I'm see. breezy. And, mm-hmm. and you know, even though it's Bull Brand, we've yeah. got Inlovo oh, in the house today. Oh, you hit that one. So, 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 so you, it's, you about to be, it's about to be a vibe. Where I feel yeah, like yeah. we're about to... Just let's just get ready. Let's yeah. brace ourselves. Yes, mm. I've been super excited um, because this is a man that I've wanted to meet for a very, very long time. We're both in the same industries, kinda. I mean, YouTube. I'm, I'm not an don't actor. Don't make it about you. I, 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 tr- I try, <laughs> but I don't be acting. We've got the multi-talented Hungani over here in the house. How are you doing, my brother? I'm very good. Gee, thanks for the intro. That was of awesome. <laughs> I mean, I wanted to go longer, but you I actually didn't, didn't even. Yeah, we. You didn't. know, for the sake of time, we don't yeah. want to go into everything that you've done, which is, you know, we'll, we'll unpack a, a little bit of it sure. right there but before we get into it we have a game here okay at yo the, we're starting with the game hey, yeah this this l- listen <laughs> this is a serious game right mm. here right this is called 60 seconds of strong which i'm trying to open the jar if you guys are listening oh there strong woman I just opened right that, there's some asmr strong for y'all, independent right? <laughs> woman 60 seconds of strong we have a few words on mm. little pieces of paper and you need to basically answer it Okay. Mm-hmm. Right? So you so have just 60 grab. seconds. You have grab 60, it out. Yeah. Now, this is a very competitive game because, yeah. listen, we are all mangobas here at the State of the Strong. <laughs> this is not just a... <laughs> the pressure. Right? I'm yeah. not putting any pressure on you. Bring it closer. We're winners. Go ahead. You can okay. even bring it closer. Like time. So, uh, Mr. Sibu is going to be our timer... <clears throat> I'm ready. Master, are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? I feel like, I don't know if I've got all the rules of this game. <laughs> there are no rules. Just so pull it out, read it, and you'll, you'll and know what's going okay. on. And then you listen, go to the next there's one. There's a reason why you're here. Mm, mm, mm. You, you ready? Me? Yeah. Okay, let's Three, go. two, one, go. My current wallpaper is myself and my wife. Ooh. Oh, Lovely this man. is tricky. Um, the last meal I had was pasta and salad, chicken pasta. If I were president for a day, I would regulate the entertainment industry. Yes. Um, how old is your Vasla? We actually got new ones. It's two weeks. <laughs> um, my most used emoji is the smiley face with the wink, with the tongue out. Um, if I were an animal, I would be an elephant in Glovo, obviously. Um Ama 2000 are young. <laughs> CBD Twitter is, I have no idea, I'm not a Twitter person. Money is a tool. Nice, 15 seconds. Um, the youth uh, of SA are radical. Nice. Um, I got my first tattoo when I was thinking of my family. It's an elephant. Mm-hmm. Um, video call versus phone call. Phone call, don't look at me. Last one. Uh, in five years' time, I will have three kids. Time. Yo. Okay. Okay, should I do the tally? Let's do the ready? tally. Let's count it up. Let's the one that I had in my hand when you said time does not count. It doesn't count. Man. Unfortunately, you got to put it back. We got to see how many we got. Okay, okay, you can count it for us. Let's go. Two, we got- three, mm-hmm. four, five, six, six seven, eight, eight, nine, nine ten, ten, eleven, eleven twelve, twelve, thirteen. No! Listen, Nungani, when we're talking about... Um, People who design their own destinies. That's one of our one of the things we, we talk about here um, at State of the Strong. I feel like we're talking about you. I would like you to, if you can, just give us a, a brief overview of how you've gotten here today. Because you've been all over the place doing everything. Yeah. I just want a quick rundown of where you started and how sure. you got here today. Um, wow. <laughs> so... I definitely, first and foremost, do not control my own destiny. Um, I started... 2011, 16th of April, was when I decided that I was going to be in the entertainment industry. I met this guy called Shelton Forbes, aka Bushy Rockstar. Shout out to Shelton, um, if you're watching Awe. Um, and I met him at the time he was dancing for artists like Duke Singanga and a whole bunch of other artists. He was opening up for Chris Brown, Trey Songs at the Dome, um, and doing a whole bunch of like really awesome stuff dance wise. Yeah. And dancing was my way of like expressing myself because like I grew up very shy. Um, so like 
talking to people was a thing and I just found myself in like corners just like expressing all of these like emotions and feelings that I had. Ooh, I saw the crump hands. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so crump yeah. is how I started. Nice. Um, so when I met Shelton in 2011 and like he was just telling me like the things that he's doing at the time I was 16. Um, I'm lying, I was 17. No, I was going to turn 17. So then I was like, cool, man, this sounds very interesting. I think it's something that I want to explore. Um, so then luckily my parents are like super supportive. Shout out to my parents. They watch everything I do. I love you guys. Um, and they were like, cool, let's see how it goes. Try it. And and literally I tried it. And then God was just like, all right, kid, you finally like listen to what the passion is and what the calling is. And here we are today. So like God is just like really paved the way for me because uh i didn't grow up wanting to be in the entertainment industry i didn't i wasn't that kid who was like oh my gosh i always knew or from a young age he showed signs of i wasn't that guy i, I was yeah, yeah like none yeah. of that i still don't want to be famous yeah. but appreciate all the support <laughs> people are out here, like rooting for you 100 yeah. percent. but you know you mentioned that you were actually very shy growing up yeah and I, I can imagine because you come from a very big family yeah I mean, uh, your parents, your mom has, I think, six siblings. Oh, damn. Right? She's you, got six siblings. You like, and okay. You were it. It's a big family. Yeah. And I can tell that you come from a very, very strong foundation as well. Yeah. Um, especially, you know, growing up where you did what? Bookbuck Bridge? Did I get that uh, right? Close. Um, close. So Bushbuck Bridge is the middle center to Hazelview and Ekonuk. Ekonuk. So I usually say Bushbuck Bridge just because like saying Hazelview and Ekonuk is just a little too so much. much. So mm. then I just use the middle ground. So I know Ekonuk. Yeah. That, that's what I know. Okay. But I love the foundation that you have and the reason, you know, just talking about the state of the strong, you've got such a strong foundation and it comes out in every single thing that you say. Families, I can tell without even having had a, conversation with you prior you mm -hmm. have such a, a love for your family and for the values that they have actually instilled in you yeah and i also love that you got married very young not i very mean young, that's a relative young. question <laughs> well okay what my do you parents mean got relative? married when they were 20 and 21 okay I got married. I was what twenty five. That's definitely nineties, eighties. That's, 90s, that's so young. I mean, this is you know we're I mean? living in the two thousands, and yeah. it's the two thousand and ten. Yeah, I think people just have it mixed up, man. People are in this whole notion of in your twenties you need to like rock the world and live your best life. But what does living like your best life look? Yeah. Okay, then, okay. <laughs> tell what does me, that tell look me like? about what living your best life looks like for you. Coming for me, from where it's you stability. Mm. You mm. can't live your best life if you're not stable. Mm -hmm. How you, how is that? And stability comes in many different ways and shapes, you know. So um, having my partner next to me, we are both in the entertainment industry. We can both build together. We yeah. can both strive together. We can help each other in our own endeavors. And I think like with that, then I always have like a strong support structure right next to me. Our industry is crucial. Like yeah. it's it's scary stuff yeah, yeah you know um and what i wanted to say was it's crucial to have a good support structure so if i have a partner who firstly understands the industry and is also part of the industry requires the same support that i need then that way she knows exactly what kind of support to give and i know exactly what kind of support to give her mm -hmm. that way we are stable in that situation yeah. so then we strive for the best and I'm we're living our best notes. life. <laughs> I'm writing like, down these you notes. Know? So get because you really were like, okay, not even that. <laughs> yeah. He actually, uh, he put out the, the requirements. Mm, you need mm, to, and mm. you can tell they're, they're in his head because he was... Yeah, I was naming that. He thought about this quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But I, mean, I, I, I fully agree with you, dude. Sure. I, I think that a lot of the time... Um, uh, people have that uh, mentality that in your twenties, like yeah. one by one, you must, you know. Um, but then, I, I, I agree that stability is probably the best thing you can do for yourself because your twenties mm. are a terrifying time. And if you're saying that you have a friend, you have a partner, like that's huge, dude. Yeah, because now you get to thirty, and then people start saying, "Okay, no, now I need to start yeah. making things happen." Yeah. Mm. By the time I'm thirty, which is two years away, I already have a home that's bought. That's yeah. not 
Do you get what I mean? Yeah. Like there's so many things that are already down in place that when we're having conversations as 30 year olds, don't remind me. <laughs> you get what dude, I mean? Like those me. are not things that, you know, or this whole notion of life begins at four. Uh, yeah. so yeah. Like, no, yeah. man, yeah. like you make it, you make it your thing. Like what I'm saying now might not resonate with someone that's watching and they like 22 and they're like, hey boy, me, I'm still here. <laughs> I'm finna get, yeah. that's your prerogative. Sure. Then like, go for it. You know, I mm -hmm. think we all have like, um, our own journeys and yeah. paths that we we choose to take and we learn what we learn from them but for me by the time I was 21 I was already in a very like toxic abusive relationship and I was just like yo bro like just sort your life out so sure. you can have a like live a good life yeah. you know so I think my journey dictated the way in which I moved and found myself where I am yeah. today yeah. well you you, we, I mean, we spoke about foundation and I guess when you have that foundation, you have a proper support structure that comes along with it. And when everything is good and right at home, or at least I won't say that everything will always be good and right, but yeah, you have for sure. the proper, like the space that you're in is very con conducive mm. for your growth, mm. right? Then you're able to go out into the world and do the stuff that you have been doing. You mentioned it's even in... Um, our 60 seconds of strong game round that you want to reform the industry. Yeah. Please tell me a little bit about that because you've already started doing that. And I'm so, we, we've, I think here at State of the Strong, we've also been talking about the future of industries yeah. Yeah. and what the future of the creative industry looks like. But I guess it, 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 it counts for everybody yeah. in any industry because the times are changing right now. Yeah. What does that mean for you and how did that journey start out? Um, so for those watching, listening who don't know, one of the things that I do is act and within the <laughs> yeah. oh, I mean, wow. <laughs> so within the acting space within the entertainment space in South Africa there's really like like really like no regulations mm. at all you know and for me it's just like you can be on a show for 10 years but within that 10 years they haven't given you medical age yeah. they haven't given you retirement annuity pension fund none of these things you know and it's just like if you don't have the right team or the right people around you to educate you and equip you with the knowledge of these various things you're not even going to invest in them yourself you know and then come 20 30 50 years down the line you've been in the industry everybody knows you you're amazing and all of that but you don't even have a retirement fund yeah, yeah. so those are the things that like the narratives that i'm trying to um if i can say change i'm not the only person but um yeah, because for me, I just feel like we can have um, individuals who don't have to bend their back by always doing brand work mm -hmm. in order to have a sustainable monthly income yeah. by posting on social media. But their true passion is to act. Mm -hmm. You know, you can just act. Yeah. And that's it because the fundamental structures that need to be there have been put in place. You know, I mean, there's Saga, for example, the South African Guild of Actors. I am an ex-co member for Saga. I'm the youngest one in history, you know, and the things that we're doing there are things like fighting to have royalties. Mm. I mean, come on. You standards, things that are supposed that, to be those, standards. Those you get what I mean? Yeah. 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 You know, and like you see my face on a screen today, again tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, then on Saturday, you watch the whole omnibus. I only got paid for the day I worked once, you know, things like that. Or you're driving on the, on the highway, you see a massive billboard with me. I don't even get a cent for that. You know, things like that where it's like, can I just own my being? Yeah. Because this is my face, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, on that contract, it's my name, yeah. right? You know, so this is the business, yeah. you know. So then let's let's do accordingly, you know. So it's things like that where it's just like for the future and longevity of our industry, it it would be wise yeah. <laughs> to, yeah. to work on these things. I love that. I love that you're also, you know, setting it up for everybody who comes after us. I think yeah. for a lot of people, it's very difficult to think that far in the future. Yeah. Like to think that our younger siblings are going to go into that industry and we would have done something about it before. Yeah. Cause 
I mean, not to hate on anybody, but sometimes it feels like the people who came before us, um, maybe it was because they were one of the first, you know, the black actors and the musicians. Yeah. Um, and they, they were just happy to get in. And they fought other and struggles. They, exactly. They had to fight their know? own struggles, which were just to get through the door. So yeah. um, I think this is our, like, this is what we're supposed to be doing yeah. um, for the guys who come after us. Um, I want to go back um, a little bit to what uh, Lirai was bringing up um, with your family situation. Um, I want to ask you, who, who's your strongest influence been over over the last couple of years? Is it family or maybe someone else? I, I feel like this guy's going to be like, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. I mean, look, babe, I know you watch. I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> to be honest with yeah. you, the, the, the greatest influence that I have is my father. And I say my father because I've seen him at his greatest um, as well as at his lowest. And both times it looked the same sure there wasn't a change in his demeanor there wasn't a change in how he strived for things there wasn't a change in my life at all as his child even though financially things were completely different like things just my lifestyle has never shifted to a point where it's like yo pops like what's going on sure. mm. even though now that I'm grown, we've spoken of you all realize. of these. Like, oh, you know, in 2006, this was our situation. Or 2008, yeah. or, you know, and I think, like, what I really appreciate about seeing that and, like, journeying with my parents is just, like, they really set out to do good, mm -hmm. you know. And regardless of the struggles, the the goal was always to do good, you know, and if it means that they suffered in whatever kind of way that they had to sacrifice certain things for themselves in order to take care of their kids, they did so, you know, and also like our family, like my uncles and aunts, they've also been a great support with, with our family. So I think just seeing, um, how, if I can say, my dad navigated life um, is one navigated. of the things. <laughs> navigated? That sounded so politically correct. It's like you thought about yeah, it. Yeah, you have to sometimes. Um, that's, that's, I think, one of the things that's made me kind of like want to strive in that direction where it's like, how am I navigating life? Sure. You know, what are the things that I'm doing that someone can look at and be like, man yeah you know i don't need you to say yeah. oh he's such a no just give me a yeah. Yeah, yeah you know because yeah he's trying and he's doing the best that he can and yeah. that's all that we need to do sometimes the greatest thing that my dad ever said to me was do your best and god will do the rest mm -hmm. And that's always what I've believed because there's just certain doors that have opened that I would have never been able to open myself because I didn't even knock in that direction. Mm. And then there's certain doors that have closed because I wanted to go in, but they closed. And then like two months down the line, you're like, you're like thank yeah. you that I never I ever was, yeah. Listen, yeah. I know, oh my word. And sometimes those doors that get closed seem like the biggest doors mm, ever. It's in so life. so, you're it's like, so, huh? so, and the thing is, the, 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 the better thing comes like a week or two or maybe like a month or very soon. I mean, it was six months for me. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, but no, I get you. regardless, I, get you. Yeah. I think the statements that you make, Hungani, are very, very purpose-driven. And you, I can tell that you walk in your purpose. And, you know, speaking of that, you have a love for people. And yeah. going back to us, you know, talking about your foundation, your grandparents built many churches around. Dead? and. This Wait, let's do is, your research. This is my goodness. Listen, you need to understand. Okay. You're not dealing with the you're not dealing with the normal one. We're not here to play games with <laughs> you. I Which mean, one is this one? Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, guys. But I mean, and that that work has, I guess, it's it's passed on to you because you've got an NPO, which I think you guys are doing amazing Thank work. Thank you. Apart from the stuff that you've done in your professional career, do you think that doing the work that you have, which I would love for you to tell us a bit more because, you know, it, it can only come from uh, the horse's mouth. And sure. Stuff. Um, do you think that's one of the greatest achievements that you've ha had so far? Um, wow, that's a great question. I think it's it's one of the most meaningful things that I've mm -hmm. done so far um, or been involved in. Um, not that I've done. Um, so Matrix Men is one of them. And we, for those who don't know, counsel and support male victims of abuse. Um, men who have struggled with divorce and child custody, uh, boys who are being bullied. Basically, we are there for men, men's mental health, the whole shebang and everything is free. 
Um, so the, the reason, firstly, I got involved in that is because of my own personal experiences, which relate to a lot of the topics that we cover at Matrix Men, including domestic violence. Um, and I think because of like the society we live in, we so quick to paint the man as the perpetrator. Um, and not to say that stats are not what they are, you know, um, but my, my notion is in our country, stats say that by the time boys are 18, 44% of them have been sexually abused in South Africa. So that's typically, if we can say, almost half of the men in our country. So if we look at what's happening with gender-based violence and all of these crimes that are happening, we can attribute to these things as people who haven't received healing, counseling, support, yeah. or have even been seen. Yeah. Because you walk into a rape crisis center, you just see pictures of girls and women. So as a man, you're not even going to start a conversation. Yeah. You know, you go to a police station, forget even bringing that up. Yeah. You know, so like these are the things where I'm like, Yes, I understand what's happening, but if we can change our perspective instead of just focusing on the victim, let's focus a little bit on the perpetrator so that we can understand the psychology of this individual so we can then solve the root cause because by just looking at the victims, we're just solving symptoms, you know, and it's not to say that we shouldn't look at victims. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, let's look at both parties that are involved. Um, so being part of organizations like these, um, for me, it's just like, firstly, it's for my own self because I relate. Um, and secondly, it's like, if I was to have a son, I don't want my son to be part of the stats yeah. mm. and not be able to get healing because out of the boys that were surveyed, they reported that they are four times more likely to perpetrate a rape because it happened to them what are the stats saying about GBV? Like these things correlate, but we're not looking in the other direction. So my acting work and all of that, like it's great and stuff. I, I love acting. It's, it's, it's something that I think I will probably die on stage. But I think the part of people, for me, it's like, that's how we relate to one another. You know, like the thing of when you walk past someone and you just greet them. Like that's such a South African thing. You yeah. know, you go yeah. overseas and you're just walking past each other. No one's saying nothing. You walk into a shop, nobody greets. And that's the only time I actually realized like, yo, like we got manners, man. Mm. You know, like we actually, we yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things I missed when I was overseas about being at home, which is like, there's such a thing about people in this country. And for me, it was like, well, how do I serve our people? What can I do? That's not like me bending my back in a way that's uncomfortable for the sake of, yeah, Hungani is also here for the people, but in an honest and authentic way. And for me, it was to do something that also really resonates with me, which is Matrix Men. Mm, mm, mm. I, I love that. Um, I think uh, I, I must say I, I partly agree with you when it comes to the perpetrators side of things. Mm -hmm. um, but the part that I wholly agree with you on is that we have to have to focus on the young boys growing up in this country. Um, I think a lot of older men, um, as much as a lot of things might have happened to them, a lot of them know right from wrong. But because of the culture that we live in, our struggle is then, their struggle is then like discerning whether um, I should be able to do A or B. But I think that's something that we really need to focus on is the young boys because I agree with you when you say that a lot of them haven't healed. A lot of them haven't seen anybody. Um, we always talk about like fatherless homes and whatever, but it's just, it's family. Yeah. It's that, it's that touch. It's that love that um, a lot of young boys don't get growing up and a lot of young girls don't get either. Yeah. Um, but I do think we need to intervene before it gets to that level. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and um, I commend you for that. Like incredibly. I think that's Thank a, you. that's a huge thing that we need to be doing because man, if you don't do it now, it'll never, ever change. Yeah. It will never, ever change so as you can see there's a lot of things that you're up to i want to know um what would you like to be remembered for you know you're very young i'm saying that because <laughs> i want people that we're the same age so he's very young um yeah but you've achieved a lot my dude you've achieved an incredible amount um what more is in the works for you and and how would you like to be remembered um, I ge genuinely don't feel like I've achieved a lot. Please. Um, I know this is, we're interviewing him, but please. 
No, like for Come real. Come on. <laughs> um, there's, there's still so much that yeah. one can, can explore and one can achieve and one sure. can do. Um, I think to be remembered, man, um, I've been struggling with the concept of death for a very long time. Um, and we just finished doing a play now called Kilm of Paradise, which I was associate producer for. And doing that, we discuss in the play what happens after death, you know, the afterlife. And that experience was kind of like a, a nice experience for me, the person who I need to explore because of this whole fear of death. Um, so being remembered is something that I haven't like really thought about like in depth because like i've always been like yeah i ain't dying i ain't now. going nowhere <laughs> like, i don't uh, need to be remembered i'm you right know? here yeah like i don't need you know i don't need to think about that yeah. um because thinking about that like for me like the thing was like yo maybe it's gonna come sooner than it needs to because now i'm pondering thinking, about it sure, you know but sure. i think if anything um it would be and this is just me speaking like off the cuff right now would be that i lived an authentic life Nice. Yeah, like my doings and all that kind of stuff, like it really doesn't, in the greater scheme of things, doesn't really do anything. But if someone can know that, like he lived an authentic life to, to whatever degree that is, yeah. um, then maybe they, they could do that for themselves, you know, because I mean, with social media, AR and virtual reality, all of these things, like we're really uh, striving almost to, to not living in, yeah. in, in an authentic way, you yeah. know, so yeah. Mm. Guys, you know, there's so much more that I wanted to ask him. I yeah. wanted to, I wanted to talk to you about your production company, <laughs> about going from TV to YouTube and how people just love you mm. and your content. But you know what? I feel like just this conversation, Jenna, and the way that he answered his questions, mm. it was like, wow. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, I feel closer to you <laughs> <laughs> no um, nothing in a sus way not it's in the a chair move for me <laughs> if, if his wife is watching this ah, i would nah, just guys. like to let you know <laughs> that the, the next interviews i think you need to join him you know in the future i think you need to come you need to be like an entourage you know how rappers go to their see yeah. you know, events see you're full of spice I'm kidding, you're I'm full kidding, of spice and i'm just gonna catch it right there because you know what you are the people that we don't like oh, man. on social media spreading these no man no that's not what we're trying that's to do but the pot. okay the final i'd love to hear the final statement you spoke about how you know you want to be remembered for being authentic sure what is your message of strength to mzansi sheesh um wow Come on, you are you do you just full I of I am firstly no psychologist, <laughs> um no doctor, no masters or PhD, anything like that. For now. <laughs> I mean the way he's going. Ah uh, no, I'll never doctor be soon <laughs> enough. <laughs> right? right? Self self, self proclaimed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um I think my message of strength to Mzanzi would be to be real and honest with themselves mm. about who they are and where they are. Um, yeah, that was supposed to be a full stop, not a um. It's fine. Yeah, talk to me about where they are. Honest. Talk to me about where they are. In the, in the sense that where you find yourself mm. in life, you know, um, those... The, those, those moments where you you get to like really look at okay sharp hungani this is your situation this mm. is where you're at you've done one two three you've done one two three and you don't have the money to pay for the rest of the month for your bills mm. right that's a that's a very true situation mm. right um looking at that and being true and honest with yourself in terms of how did i get here in order to then try and figure out how can I get out of here. And that's just one example. Sure. You know, it could be anything really. But I think most of the time um, when I do talks, like the challenge that I find with young people is this whole like comparison thing, yeah. you know, and like comparison can put you in a place where you're not thinking about self and where you're at, but rather about others and what they're doing. So how can it look like you're also like part of the others, yeah. you know, and come five years down the line, you find yourself in a hole that you don't even know. When did you start digging? Yeah. You know? So when I say where you are, that's what I mean. Like in your life at whatever age you are, mm. like, where you at? Yeah. What's popping? You got yeah. two kids. Have you seen them? Sure. You know, mm. like what's going on? 
big questions yeah. right yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Those know, are the questions. So yeah. Be honest with yourself. Stop lying to yourself because at the end of the day, like you only have one shot. Yeah. You know, so like, is it going to be a three pointer? Is it going to be a, what do they call it when it doesn't even touch the net? No, I'm enjoying this. You Keep going. An air ball. I love there we go. Sports people talk you know? sports. It's my favorite thing ever. So I'm not even a sports person. <laughs> that's, I'm me yeah. either. So I, that's I, why I, I didn't even know the thing. term. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, like, that's what I mean. Like, are you going to score the ball yeah. through whatever penalty shot? Or are you going to hit the pole and it's going to reflect? Yeah. Or are you going to completely miss the, the target? Yeah. You know, things like that. Um, yeah, that's what I mean by by where you at. Just just be honest with yourself, man. Like look yourself in the mirror. In fact, I'm gonna look into camera. Look into camera right look now. Look yourself in the mirror. And just be real. <laughs> like where you at in life? Where are you? Wagwaning. <laughs> Wagwaning. <laughs> wow, you heard it here first. Look yourself in the mirror. Ask yourself where where are you? What do you need to fix? Where do you need to go back in time um, and realize I am? I'm so happy we got to have this conversation. Thank you. I've been waiting for a long time to talk to this man, um, and I feel like we're just gonna. If you could stay, I mean, I wouldn't mind if. I... Ladies and gentlemen, he is a dancer. Yes. He's an actor. Yes. He's a producer. Yes. He's a young king. He's an inspiration. Mm -hmm. His vaslap is only two weeks two old. Like weeks what? Old. <laughs> How much better? You know what? We're gonna be calling him Doctor. But wow. thank you so much for coming here and for, you know, honoring us with your presence thank you at for the State of you. the Strong. Mm -hmm. um, I can't wait to have you back or just to have another conversation with sure. you and to have an update of what uh, Dr. Ndlovu... I'm, I'm going right? to... Right? It has a ring, in the screen, guys. I'm going to be like, yo, what's up, Dr. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to... Uh, that's literally what I'm going to call you, but um, thank, thank you Thank you, so guys. Much for thank you. Here. Appreciate it. Uh, no. What I can end off by saying is that mm. you are a true man. Shout out. Appreciate you.